This meeting is being recorded. Um, Kyle, could you do me a huge favor and mute everyone? Because um, I gave you host and... Sorry about that, Clark. I uh, even muted you. Awesome. Um, welcome, 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 everyone. Um, so excited that you're all here today. So excited to have you here for LC 101. This is the start of a really exciting, hard, rewarding, terrifying, all sorts of adjectives um, journey for you. Um, so I am so ready to see where you all go and how you thrive. Um, so I am going to um, do a few things, make a few announcements. And um, so first of all, you all figured out something that we we sometimes have to be nimble and flexible. Um, these things happen, especially in a virtual environment. Um, I appreciate all of you all moving and pivoting and realizing how much we rely on things like Slack to get us through. So um, hopefully from here on out, this starting tomorrow, uh, starting over the next couple days, or sorry, not tomorrow, starting Thursday, the, we will have a link and it will be right. And it will be the same link going forward. It will not be this link because this is my link, not Kyle's link. Um, so just come Thursday, keep an eye on the announcements channel. Um, we will post the link and that link will be the one we use moving forward. But you all got a good lesson in Zoom, some of its silly things, some of its limitations and how to, to pivot and be flexible and be nimble. So um, super happy, super excited you all were able to do that. Um, super happy to see so many people here despite a little bit of a rocky start. Um, so today we're gonna have more or less class like usual. However, before we begin, I wanna give a chance for our brilliant uh, instructor and TAs to introduce themselves. Um, so uh, first of things first, your TAs are the backbone of this program. They are the ones that you are gonna, you know, maybe cry to, celebrate with, work with over the course of the next uh, six months. You, are, you have a small group of TAs. Um, your small group is a pair of two TAs, but I want you to feel comfortable going to any TA's office hours so you know that you can always join another TA. So I wanna give a chance for all the TAs to introduce themselves. So you kind of can put a face to a name so that when you see that Marcus is offering office hours, you know who Marcus is. Marcus, that was a throw to you to go ahead. If you could just introduce yourself in a one sentence introduction, who you are, how you learn to code, and what you're most excited about for this class. And then we'll just go down and have each TA do, do a brief introduction and then finish it off with Kyle. Sounds good, thank you, Clark. Uh, as I said, my name is Marcus. Uh, I learned the code uh, via a different coding program down in Los Angeles. I'm super excited to meet everyone here and uh, learn to teach as much as you learn the code. So I'm super excited to be here, thank you. I read the agenda, I'm next. I'm Sean, I'm lead developer for H2J Tech. I, let's see, learn to code in LC 101 on a, what's known, what I'd call a speed run in their code camp. Um, so I've sat in your seat before doing this at an accelerated pace and it knocked me on my rear. So uh, that was coming in with a little bit of developer experience. So be ready guys, uh, you're gonna learn a lot and we're here to support you through the whole thing. Never hesitate, never hesitate to ask. Looking forward to helping you guys all to graduation. I wanna see all of you graduation if possible. Oh, hello everyone, I'm Santoshni. Uh, I like to learn coding during my college days itself. Um, and also you got muted. Unmute yourself so we can hear you. Uh, sorry, I was talking with myself. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Santoshni. Yeah, I uh, learned coding during my college days itself. I I love coding. Coding is lots of fun. Um, uh, last LC101 itself, I learned coding how to do for JavaScript in Java. 
uh, so we all uh, gathered together uh, we all uh, learned coding easier yeah that's it thank you my name is kevin gandaho i've been coding since 2019 um, i was in launch codes code camp course uh, launch code has done great things for me uh, you know got me a better job so this is my way of giving back and teaching the next uh, set of launch coders. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. Um, I learned to code through Launch Code's Coder Girl program uh, and I am most looking forward to all of the aha moments that I get to witness. They're all really fun and really special. So looking forward to being there with you guys. Hi, uh, my name is Rama Lakshmi. Uh, you guys can call me Rama. Uh, even I've learned uh, just like Sara uh, with Coder Girl and uh, happy to help you guys here. Looking forward and I just want to, you know, uh, help you and learn myself more by coding. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Terrence. Uh, I've self-taught uh, programmer, uh, full stack developer. Uh, I'm the one to actually uh, create the videos for everyone uh, over in the chapter review. Uh, I have a passion for programming and I got my start here at Launch Code about six years ago. And like, uh, I too wanted to give back because it was a great opportunity. And all of us, all the TAs here, we all know how you feel. Just understand you're not alone. And we're here for each and every last one of you. Uh, I guess I'll introduce myself here now. My name's Colin. I did construction for about 10 years before I started self-teaching code and have been doing it for the last four or five years now. Um, this is my first time through this, so I'm really nervous and anxious, just like all of you guys. I don't know 100% what to expect, um, but we'll make it if we keep trying. So on to the next. Hi. Um, oh, oh. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fred. Hi, my name is Pan, and I am. Uh, this is my second TA cohort, and I am a Launch Code graduate in 2020. So I went through the heat of the pandemic, and this was my this was my sourdough project. Um, so I am really excited to be a TA again. I'm uh, just giving back like I was given. So I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. I'll go next. I'm Fred. I went through LC 101 back in 2018. I've TA'd five or six different sessions. Um, I do it to get back for a program that got me to where I'm at. I am currently a developer at Centene. Hey guys, I'm Lisa. Um, I'm um, in the TA group with Sri and I've been coding since 2020. Um, I went through LC 101 as well, so I'm very familiar with the program and I'm excited to help you guys. Hi, uh, my name is Sri Charanya. You guys can call me Sri. I know, like others, like I learned code from Launch Code as I did my LC 101 in 2020. And Kyle used to be my TA when I was a student. So before you all, I'm his first student here. <laughs> And as others said, yes, we want something to give back, you know, like as we learned from the launch code. So I'm here doing my second cohort as a TA. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and go. Uh, I'm Dakota. I'm a full stack developer with Vizient. Uh, and I also went through the launch code program, the LC 101 program. Uh, and just, yeah, here to give back. I'm uh, Haley Smith. I went, I started, um, it was exactly where you guys are in December of 2019. And I was a TA a couple of times and now I'm an apprentice uh, software developer for Accenture. So, um, and um, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. Hi, I'm Katie. Um, I learned to code in LC 101, like the majority of the TAs. And I'm just really excited to for everyone to learn and to give back. 
Hi, this is Safna. I am also a launch code graduate. I did a LC 101 and I'm excited to see you all. Um, please reach out to us if you need any help. Don't hesitate. All right, what's up, y'all? My name is Lawrence. I'm a full stack developer at FedEx here in the greater Memphis area. Um, I learned to code from Launch Code LC 101 when they were in Memphis, as well as at least a half a dozen online resources. Um, I'm really excited to see people do things they never thought they could do and become something they never thought they could become. We're here for you. Hi, I'm Jay uh, from St. Louis. Um, learned to code in high school and kind of gave it up during college and came back and uh, did launch code before they had LC 101. Uh, and I'm one of the um, <clears throat> the few that didn't didn't actually get to take LC 101. So, uh, but I've I've TA'd for I think this is probably my fifth or sixth session now. So, here to help you all out. Hey everybody, I'm Derek. I'm gonna be one of the TAs. Uh, I graduated with a degree in computer science in 2019. I work right now as a software developer for Enterprise Rent a Car. I, I got into it because I'm a good Java developer. That's my background. And they needed a Java developer at the time. So that's my specialty, back-end type stuff. So yeah, happy to, happy to be helping anybody who needs help coming up here. I think. That's everyone. Did I miss any TAs? Me. Sorry about that, Bree. That's fine. I was being patient. I was waiting for you to see if you missed anyone. Uh, <laughs> my name's my name's Bree. Um, I am originally self-taught. I did go through Launch Code, though, to get into the industry in 2019, 2020. I've done this about four or five times. I'm a floating TA, meaning I will not have groups of students assigned to me, so I am open to be reached out at any point by any student. And I will be jumping around throughout the course, helping as many people as I can, specifically focusing on students that can't meet with their TAs for scheduled hours. So if you can't meet with your TAs, come find me. My goal will be able to help those that can't receive the help they need from their group TA. And then one- And just so no one, I'm sorry, Clark, but uh, students can reach out to all the TAs, right? They're not limited to their own mm -hmm. group. Okay, yep. just if you're clarifying on Canvas, for everybody. If you're on Canvas, um, and we'll, um, you should note that today I added a document to Canvas on the main syllabus page that has all the office hours of all the different TAs. And yeah, you should feel free, your TAs that you are assigned to for your group, they're responsible for grading, for leading your group. But if you find that, you know, someone has 7 a.m. office hours and you're an early book bird, and want to meet at 7 a.m., go to their office hours. We're trying to prioritize having people available for you um, to, to meet with so you can get the help you need. Um, I want to let one more person introduce themselves before passing it over to Kyle. Um, and this is someone that I am very proud and happy we have on board. Um, the, Dr. Marnice Anthony is our success coach. And the role of the success coach is your TAs are wonderful humans but they are here to help you learn how to code. They are not, and we recognize there's a lot of other issues that you may have in your life um, that don't revolve around code, but may impact your ability to succeed in this course. So that's why we bring on someone called a success coach. And this success coach is here to help you with things that are external to coding, external mm -hmm. to um, like not understanding what a variable is, not understanding how to use a function. That's stuff for your TAs. But if you're having trouble with needing a mental health resource, if you're looking for food security issues, if you're looking for, ment uh, for, is for help with time management, that's our success coach's role. Mm -hmm. So Monice, if you're on the call, do you want to introduce yourself? 
Yeah, so um, again, hello uh, to everyone again. As I said earlier, for the people that I miss, St. Louis is home. Uh, I certainly understand the challenge and the demand that's ahead of you. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I'm a veteran of the United States military, so I understand all things technology and that air that flexibility is the air to key power. So all of the, all of those wonderful things. So um, I work with adult learners primarily throughout my entire uh, professional career. Um, I've also worked with the National Science Foundation in their STEM arm, again, understanding all things technology. My job, again, as Clark said, is to help you with those external factors. For that reason, I've uploaded some information on Slack. I've shared my information with everyone on Slack as well. I've added evening and weekend hours to kind of accommodate needs. You have my cell phone number. You have all of my information. Um, I actually, again, come to this role with the uh, Knowles uh, Adult Learning Theory, which says that we're here to support you. We talk about humanistic conception and self-direction, all of those things that I'm here to help, help you with, with those external factors, that life balance, and those things that to make that will make you successful. So please use me, reach out to you. There's this thing called habits of discussion, where if you don't ask a question, you won't get an answer to it. So that's why I'm here. I'm excited as well. Clark Roman, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this journey. Awesome. Um, I'm so excited to have all the people you just met. I'm excited to have Kyle, who you're about to meet. Um, I, my role is as the candidate engagement manager. I am here to help support this program, to support you. If you have issues with, with stuff going on in class, if your laptop dies and you can't continue on in class, reach out to me. I can see what resources we have. I'm here to help connect you with who you need to talk to to help you succeed in this course. So um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help you with logistics, with anything that I can do to help. Um, and reach out to me if you just want to celebrate your wins, because that's my favorite part of this class. When you finally understand you know, how to make this function work, how to make that method work, you finally understand classes. When you get to that point and you're like, oh, it was so hard, reach out to me, tell me you did it, because that's what drives me, that's what fulfills me. I am here to be your cheerleader and to help you get through this program. Um, and with that, I'm gonna pass it to Kyle and we're gonna get into lecture for tonight. Awesome, thank you, Clark. Great to see all the TAs coming back to you. I saw some new faces also. It's just great to see that. All right, let's go ahead and start sharing my screen here in just a moment. As you've got the gist of it, my name is Kyle. I'm gonna be that annoying voice that talks to you for the next few months. So let's go ahead start doing some stuff. I gotta get prepped over here. Hope everyone's having a great day. Hope everyone just loves Monday Zoom issues. Isn't that the best? All right, share screen, there we go. Got that, coolio. Got to do a few more things on my end. I can find my stuff, where'd you go, Zoom? There we go, it's like, where'd you go? That's what I needed. Awesome. Everybody ready for this? Everybody excited? Like Clark called me the other, like a couple of weeks ago. He's like, Kyle, you in it? Like, are you gonna do this again? I'm like, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. But also I couldn't like hold my giddiness like back at all. Cause I love doing this. I am super stoked. So I hope all of you are super stoked because if you're not super stoked, that makes me less stoked and I don't like that. So let's all just be stoked together. And let's get introduced into JavaScript. But before that, it is time for me to be boastful. I'm gonna talk about me. And a second here, do, 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 do. I'm gonna turn off a few things. Got some small little stuff. Boop -a doop All right, hello everyone, my name's Kyle. I am a person here that is gonna be teaching you stuff and things and cool, neat tech, whatever. Sorry, as you can tell, the coffee is hitting, but also going down. I'm like on those like caffeine waves. But anyway, my name's Kyle. I am from, or I never actually got to take launch code, actually. So um, I came in through the company I work for. That we'll find out here in a second. But <clears throat> in general, absolutely, hands down, love launch code. I love this program. I'm, ex 
extremely excited that you are all here with me to take this class. So just a few things about me, so we're not completely strangers. I'm gonna move my face away from here. There we go, now I can see everybody. Awesome, so a few things about me is that, well, as you can already tell, I am a coffee addict. So you will see a lot of coffee in these lectures because it is late. The sun is down and it's also winter and it was, well, today was actually kind of nice, but sometimes it's grimy and like sometimes I need caffeine. So huge caffeine addict, love coffee. Unfortunately, a Starbucks addict, but I always do like to try local stuff. So if you have any coffee shops anyone likes out there, please send them my way. Love to go to new coffee shops and help support local businesses. I'm also a traveler. So I travel a lot. I travel everywhere. I like to just go out and see some things. So sometimes you'll see this background a little bit different just because I'm in a different location. Doesn't mean I will pay any less attention to you all. Just letting you know that my background will change once in a while. It's like to travel some places. So uh, continuing this thing, if you have any travel recommendations, also send them my way. And then final quick thing, I am an avid dog wanter. Unfortunately, I'm a dog owner, just a wanter. I love dogs. Unfortunately, I don't have a house right now for a dog. So you're gonna hear me talk about dogs a lot as well on a lot of our examples. So I apologize right now, but not really apologize because I also throw some cats in there too, but I'll use the dogs a lot of my examples. Um, one more thing that I didn't put in here. As you can tell, I, well, actually right now it looks kind of decent. I don't have a closet door here, but actually I didn't have a closet about two weeks ago because I'm right now in the middle of a house rehab. So uh, you might see a lot of constructions. If you do a one-on-one -on -one with me, which we'll talk about in a second, and I'm covered in dust, don't judge me too hard. I'll promise I'll take a shower at the end of the night, but I am in the midst of construction. So if you see weird things, tarps and whatever, like fingers crossed, I have a closet door here soon, but you're gonna see probably some construction stuff here and there once in a while. Um, yeah, that's, that's it really, that's just for me. else? Not anything really. Cool, all right, enough about me. I guess I probably already bored y'all, but whatever. Let's move on to the one thing that we're gonna start with every week. It's gonna be announcements, just things that I gotta tell you guys about so you know, that I know that you know, because I said it. So the first announcement, of course, is welcome to class. Happy you all are here. So these are announcements, um, and, but in addition, I don't really have anything today to talk about. So we're just gonna go over a few things. Clark mentioned everything. Uh, that I would want to talk about. So let's just hop into class and talk about a few things because I'm sure you all have questions and I want to give you those answers. So let's do that. All right, so as you can tell right now, I'm going to keep your mute on during just the start of these lectures. At any time we're going, or that you have a question or you want to chat or anything like that, we're going to be using Slack for that. So we're actually going to have a few channels here that I would love for you all to use if you have questions or if you want to talk. Those channels, the first one being is lecture chat. Lecture chat is gonna be through Slack. If you wanna add it on Slack, all you gotta do is go to your channel section on the left-hand side, click that plus button, and type in hashtag lecture chat. Why I'm doing this is because I'm actually, as of right now, and don't be mad at me, I'm already probably gonna get on your bad side here, but I'm actually going to disable the chat on our Zoom meeting right now in future Zoom meetings. So we're not gonna have a chat on here, instead we're gonna do that to Slack all of our communication for this entire class will typically be going through Slack. Also, a little bit on Canvas, but majority on Slack itself. So feel free to join that channel, talk amongst yourselves there, but also don't forget to pay attention to lecture. And then the second channel I wanna talk about real quick is the hashtag lecture questions channel. This is the one I'm gonna be paying attention to in lecture as we move forward. So if you have a question and I have you on mute because I'm a terrible person, throw that question into lecture questions channel and I will be happy to see it and address it and definitely throw anything you have into lecture so I can explain a little bit more. That comes to say my third point and final point, most important point, please ask questions. Hopefully I'm not coming off too much as intimidating yet, but please, if you have any questions, throw them in that lecture questions channel. I'll unmute people also, or excuse me, I'll unmute the class periodically too to ask questions. So feel free to talk up. I'm happy to hear anything. If I didn't go into depth for whatever reason into some kind of concept that you really want to talk about a little bit more, let me know and I'll absolutely be doing that for you. I'm here to help all of you cross that line at the end of this class and I will do anything in my power to do so. So throw all of those questions my, my, my way and I will address as many, if not all, as well as I can. 
That being the, let me actually go ahead and move over here. Give me a second. Oh, man. Give me a second. There we go. All right. All right. That being said, I want to, I really want to clarify that I want all of you to succeed in this class. As everyone has told you up until this point, this class is no joke. It is not easy. It comes with a lot of material and it comes with a lot of stuff. Hence why I want to give you all as many resources as possible to help you, as well as other TAs out there have also given you a lot of material. But I want to go over the things that I have to offer you all. So the first one is that, as you can tell, this lecture right now is being recorded. These recordings will absolutely be available to you through the YouTube channel that I have here. I'll be sharing these links here in the future, so don't feel like you have to write this down on a pen and paper right now. Don't worry about it. Just listen, and we'll share all those links here soon. So yeah, this lecture, as well as our studio reviews, which we'll talk about in a moment, will also be on that YouTube channel for you to watch as much as you want, as much as you want to hear my beautiful voice. Oh, and thank you, T.A. Sean. I just saw that. Let me go over here. There we go. Perfect. All right, so all of the material that we're going to be recording here in lecture, for whatever reason, will all be available on that channel. Feel free to see that. It is actually, I'm going to show it to you over here. If you come over here, there's, you're going to come to my channel right now, and you're not going to see any JavaScript content. You're only going to see Java content. Don't worry about it. It's because we don't have any content yet. This is our first time meeting. So once this lecture has been finished, I'll go ahead and put this recording up there, and you should be able to see it. Awesome. All right, one more thing, too. The drive. Sounds so intimidating, the drive. This drive is gonna have all of the presentations that you're gonna be seeing. So even this one tonight, this will have all the slides for JavaScript on, on it. I will have all the lecture slides up there right now. If you wanna, for whatever reason, go into lecture 19 and see what's up and coming, go for it. Don't recommend it, but it is there for your resource. So all the slides will be there for your availability at any time on that drive. Again, I'll be sharing this link, so don't feel like you have to copy it down right now. All right, and then, excuse me, finally, there are a, about 100 plus students in this class, and I want to help each and every one of you. However, my time is limited. So if you ever do, for whatever reason, want to make a one-on-one -on -one time with me, I have my calendar, any available time on my calendar, open to you using a thing called Calendly. I can never actually say it correctly. Calendly? I call it Calendly, but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. The word's on there. Pronounce it however you want. But this application will help you book time with me for one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have a question and you just want 15 or 20 minutes of my time just to throw it at me, feel free to book that time. If you have a little bit stronger problem, 40 minutes. If you just want to really talk about something that you have a knowledge block with, I have 60-minute intervals as well. So feel free to utilize my time as much as you want. If the time is there on my calendar, then you are available to book it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share those links for you just because I don't want to forget promise you I would. There we go. Copy all that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that into announcements. So it is going to be an announcements. Feel free to get it anytime. I'm going to also pin it to the channel. So it's always there forever and ever. Perfect. All right. Ooh, let me make sure I got everything here. Do, do, do. Oh yeah. All right. One more thing. So we have class tonight. 7 o'clock, 7-ish, 7 at 645, 7, we're going to typically end lecture, and you're going to go into your small groups. That small group, as you already know, you're going to be working on your studios with your groups by yourself, however you want to self-organize. But after that, the studios can sometimes raise questions, or you want to go over it. In that case, I will be going over the studios every night at 8.30 after lecture. So studio review is what I will also record. So I'll go over that lecture, or sorry, excuse me, I'll go over the studio how I see it, record it, and then of course, please, please, please come in and join us. Ask questions you want about the review, and we'll work through them together. So studio reviews, especially for tonight, for our first studio, will be at 8.30 p.m. Again, if you can't make that, because it is getting a little late, so I'd like to drink coffee, it, the recording will be on the channel in the morning. So lecture and studio review are typically posted, usually around, hopefully, 6 to 9 a.m. the next day. Awesome. All right. I'm going to unmute real quick any questions. Anything I missed? Anything that you guys would want to go over?
yes, Jody, I completely understand. Let me know if you need any additional accommodations and we can always meet one-on-one -on -one with Calendly. I see two people typing, I see several people typing. So I'll give it a moment here and we'll get some questions done and then we'll hop into this. So the links to the resources are in the announcements channel, hashtag announcements, but also TA Sean just placed it in there as well. I saw a question saying, if we miss a class and catch up the next day after, I highly do not recommend that unless you have an absolute reason for missing class. In addition, you will have to tell your TA if you are going to miss a class and get that excused by them. If you are not able to tell your TA, they're not gonna know where you are, they're gonna worry. So make sure you are telling your TA if you have to miss, but I do not recommend missing too many classes. Annie, do our TAs have Calendarly links? That would be up to them. So if they do, they will hopefully tell you uh, maybe tonight. I know some of them did in the past, but they might have a different way of scheduling time for them. So you'll have to ask them individually. Great question. All great questions. Jeff, if you can't hear me, then you might want to check your audio settings. Make sure that you are connected to audio. On the bottom left of your Zoom screen, you should see connect to audio. Hopefully you are already doing that. If not, you'll need to go to the settings in Zoom. Does the studio review remain on this Zoom link? For tonight, as of right now, yes, it will be on this Zoom link. Into the future, it will be whatever other new Zoom link that we have for lecture, which I'll post as well in the announcement as soon as we have it. All right, can't take too much more time, but I'll take a couple more questions here. I'm not really sure what studio is, is the question. You'll find out that a little bit more tonight as your TA dives into it a little bit deeper. Studios are to help review the subjects and the materials that we'll go over today in lecture. Micah, or to that question, what app should we have open for this class? As I go through lecture, I'll introduce you to new apps and how to exactly access them. For tonight, we're gonna to be going with the application called Replit. If you wanna to go to that, it's at repl.it and you press enter and it will take you to the application we'll be using tonight. All right, one more question, y'all, and then we gotta keep going. Won't take that one as a question. Yeah, I apologize. If you do raise your hand in Slack, or I'm sorry, if you raise your hand in Zoom, I will not be able to see it. I'll be looking at lecture questions channel in Slack always for any questions that a student has. Sorry about that. I know that some people work with Zoom and have their hands raised sometimes. I just never see it because I have eight different screens up here right now. Jeff, unfortunately, I can't help you with that one. So um, I don't know if a TA can and tell them to connect to audio in the bottom left there. Can you remind everyone to use the lecture questions channel and not lecture chat channel to ask questions and say, um, yeah, absolutely. Right now, I think we've been respecting that quite a bit, but yeah, make sure that you're using question, lecture questions for questions and the lecture chat for any just general conversation about the lecture. Um, for Alex, go ahead and reach out to um, Jeff directly if you want to ask those questions or start a thread from that conversation piece. All right, I don't see any more questions. We need to get into this stuff. So let's start learning. Let's get going, y'all. All right, is everyone out there ready for some knowledge, ready for some launch code, ready for some coding? Good, bad, kind of? Meh, not even getting to meh out there. All right, well then, 
We're going to see how this goes. Fine. Let's just do this. Don't worry. We're going to start really, really like extremely hard. We're going to go in the deep end because I always feel like that's like the hard way to like the best way to learn. So let's go ahead and bake a cake. Who's ready to bake a cake? I know I am. I love cake. Let's talk about a cake. It's great things, right? I know there's some people out there, for some reason, my best friend in life, he does not like cake. Don't understand it, but I know there's people out there. I, on the other hand, love cake. But let's talk about how we actually create this doughy goodness. Well, number one, we have to mix the ingredients. We have the ingredients already. We have to mix them, right? If we're baking this cake, we need to mix up ingredients. Then answer to yourself, what comes next? What comes after mixing the ingredients? Well, generally, we need to bake the batter. Let me go ahead and just... There we go. Got a little first aid tech stuff. All right, then you gotta bake the batter. So you've mixed the ingredients and now you're gonna bake the batter. Fantastic, and now three. Yes, I know, this is launch code. You're in the correct class. I swear you're not in a baking class right now, but we're gonna talk about this. Number three, decorate and serve it up. Awesome. So we mix the ingredients, bake that batter, and then decorate and serve it up. I wanna congr congratulate all of you out there because you just learned your first algorithm. Algorithms are things that are sequential. As you just look at for this recipe card on the left-hand side, everything here is absolutely sequential. We cannot mix those ingredients, or sorry, we cannot bake that batter before mixing the ingredients. It has to go line by line. We start with mixing the ingredients, we then bake the batter, and then we decorate and serve it up. You cannot get out of order here. If you do get out of order, you're gonna end up with a pretty messy looking cake. So hence, algorithms are something that goes line by line and you cannot skip over them, otherwise you're going to have a problem. This right here is the basics of an algorithm. And you do them all the time. Your tasks out there that require step-by-step -step processes, those are algorithms. Algorithm is just a fancy word that is more of a line-by-line -line task, a sequential task that we work with. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this. Let's get even more complicated out here, everyone. Let's add one plus two. Take a deep breath. I know there is a little bit of math involved here. One plus two. I'm gonna bring in our friend here, the computer. The first step of adding one plus two, we need to get the first number. What is the first number of one plus two? Well, it is one. Awesome. Let's keep going down our task here. Number two, let's go ahead and get the second number and add it. So add the second number. So we have one plus two. Awesome. Let's get a little bit even more tricky. I know we're getting pretty tricky here. We're going to then show the answer, three. So we got the first number there, one. We added the second number, plus two, and then we showed the answer, three. And these algorithms that we're following here for humans, for us, that we can understand, we're all just written in English. Plain English there for baking a cake and adding one plus two. Fantastic, we can understand that. However, we're not gonna be talking with ourselves to do all of these fancy algorithms we're gonna be doing in launch code. Instead, we're gonna be talking to a computer. So for computers, their tasks, their algorithms are written in programming languages. Not like a human language, but something that a computer can understand. So let's be introduced to our first programming language, JavaScript, our brand new friend. Now, one thing I wanna to talk to you about JavaScript real quick is that JavaScript is a front end language. What is a front end language exactly? Well, it's one that these are this one thing that works on stuff that we see on our computer, AKA the front end stuff, the things that we actually see on possibly websites or other web applications like so. Now we know that our computer does not have the whole internet inside of it. So our front end stuff that we see visually, like on websites, web applications, things like that, connect to something external from our computer itself. We call this thing a server. These servers talk to our front-end languages, but servers are programmed in something a little bit different, which you might see as called back-end languages. So we have front-end languages and back-end languages, where back-end languages are a little bit different than JavaScript, and they're typically in C-sharp and Java, or languages of those sorts. So I just wanna introduce you here to the quick realm of programming languages. We have our front-end languages, which is JavaScript, which we'll be working with here in this first unit. 
And then it talks to servers in the backend, which we do not have to worry about right now. Don't be writing that too much down. Don't look in too much in the servers. That's all the backend. But just know that it's not a mystery anymore of what these things are talking to. Our server is in the background. So we're going to be focusing for this unit on the front end applications. So let's go ahead and start speaking this language's language. Now let's bring in that human string that we were just talking about. Computer, print out three to the stream. If you take this sentence right now and scream it at your computer, the one that my face is currently on, what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna be very confused of why it's being screamed at by you to show it three. It has no idea what you're saying at all. I promise you, go ahead and try it because that would be hilarious right now. Also, make sure you turn on your camera as you do it. Please and thank you. So we cannot do this because we're using human language to talk to our computer. So instead, we need to translate this into something our computer can actually understand. So this exact sentence in human readable form can be kind of translated to something that we see here, console log three. This right here is our first bit of programming language, our first bit of JavaScript. And this is something that the computer can actually understand. It's like, okay, I actually know what you're saying now. You want me to console.log3. Now you might be saying to yourself, I have no idea what that language is, but you know what? We're gonna kind of build the bridge to understand what these two languages are saying back and forth. So yes, our console log three, when that happens, we show a three on the screen. Fantastic, that's what we wanna see. Now, what we're gonna do here is that I'm gonna introduce you to, excuse me, actually, I'm gonna a little ahead of myself. One thing that we really need to pay attention to is how this is written. Look at it very closely, console.log three. If I wrote it like this, console, with a capital C dot log in all caps and three, because I just didn't care today. That right there, the computer will have no idea what you're talking about. It is very case sensitive in programming languages. Programming languages are very case sensitive. So we must be very, very clear on what we type out in our coding environment. So make sure when you see this, we are actually writing it correctly. A lot of those syntactical errors, which we'll talk about in the future, or errors just in general, can come from just small misspellings or capitalizations that shouldn't have been there. So let's go ahead and see this in the computer. So we see a console.log of three. Now we're gonna be writing this in the computer here. So what we are doing is we're writing code in a thing called a code environment. This is a place that we're going to write computer code and have it actually do something. On our computer itself, we need some kind of medium to tell our computer what to do. And that medium, unlike pen and paper for human language, is an IDE, which stands for an integrated development environment, something that takes our code and tells the computer what to do. Now I'm going to pause here because I see that Jody has a question. Why not let A equal three and then console log A? So right now, Jody, we haven't actually know what any of that stuff is just yet. So we're going to pause on that question. We're going to keep going, but I'll come back to it here for a moment, or in a moment. But instead, let's go ahead and talk about real quick an IDE and what that exactly is. So this is where we get to be introduced to our first application that you all will either hate or love or a little bit in the middle. It's called Replit. Replit is found at Rep as we already saw the links to, R-E-P-L-I-T dot com. You can also type in R-E-P-L dot I-T too, I think, and it leads to the same thing. Either one, this is where you can find Replit. In the first few lectures, this is actually gonna be the IDE that we're going to be writing a lot of our code in. So this is gonna, once you log in and create an account, this is gonna be the screen you're typically greeted with. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be at the top left here and click Create Replit, or REPL. What I want to do is select, let's see here, is it, do I have to do Node.js? I don't think I do. Yep, Node.js there. And what I'm going to do is say lecture one, 2022. Fantastic. And I'm going to click create REPL. Once that happens, I'm led to this thing here that allows me to type in code. And I have a thing over here, this black thing to the right. This portion right here that says index.js, this is my IDE. This whole thing is my IDE actually, where we can actually type code and have our computer do something. The one line of code we have right now to print something to the screen is actually what? Does anyone remember what 
the code we use to print something to the screen? Can anyone tell me? Go ahead and feel free to unmute yourself. What prints something to the screen? Piero, I see that. Awesome. Oh, I thought I did it. Oh, there we go. Sorry. You said to shout it at the screen as loud as we can, right? Yes, Sean, absolutely. Console.log. <laughs> Love it. Console.log. Fantastic. That is exactly right. Console.log. Awesome. And then in here, we're going to place in quotes three. And we're going to put a semicolon at the end there. Always make sure you put a semicolon on the end. We haven't talked about that, but just want to shout that out now. I'm going to be ringing in the ear the whole time. Once you type that code, feel free to press run. Once we do that, on the right-hand side, by the way, this is called a console. It's going to be the output for, from our JavaScript. So as we see, we printed that out to the screen. We printed a three there. Awesome. We have successfully printed something out to the screen using console log in an IDE. So take a pause for a moment. You just learned your first line of code, what an IDE is, and we printed it out to the screen here. So in the first like 20 minutes, you are already able to put code to virtual pen and paper and see its output. So just take that in for a moment. Feel free to try for yourself also. Go to Replit and do it, your, uh, do it any way you want. But this is awesome. This is the bare necessities for writing JavaScript in our code here in JavaScript, excuse me. All right, awesome. Well, now that I have you all unmuted and you're actually unable to meet, I wanna make sure that we're all okay here. So like I said, we learned a lot. So let's go over what we just learned. Tasks within an algorithm are completed as such. How are they completed? Sequentially. Sequentially, 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 sequentially. All code starts at line one and works its way down. Code always goes sequentially. And we're gonna go ahead and see that right here. So we saw console.log, and I'm gonna put in four here instead. Code always goes sequentially. So why, what that means exactly is that we have console log three, it starts at one, it prints out three, and then it goes down here to this console log on line two and prints out four. That's why we see three and four on two separate lines right after each other. No matter how many times I press run, it will always go from line one to line two. Sequentially, sequentially, sequentially. Awesome job. JavaScript is a blank end computer language. Front end. Front end. It is a front end computer language. Awesome job. It is exactly what we see. So anything that you see on websites is typically using JavaScript. The websites you go for finance, for fun, for YouTube, anything you want to go for is typically using JavaScript in the back end to make all that fancy stuff work. And that's what you're learning today. Let's keep going. Blank is the line of code that prints something to the screen. What is that? Console.log. Very yeah. good. Console.log. This prints something to the screen. One thing I want to call out about this is console.log is typically for human benefit. For human benefit. It doesn't do anything for the computer. The computer's just showing you something. So remember that. It's for human benefit. It doesn't really do anything for the computer. The computer's like, okay, I'll show you this, and then I'll go back to whatever I was doing. So remember, that's what console.log is for. And then finally... For code to work, it must be written in a what? Language. Touche. I do accept that one, but where does that language have to be? In the computer. Oh, in an IDE. Uh, Sean, I'm going to mute you. IDE. Very good. It has to be in an IDE, aka a coding I environment, for it to work. Awesome job, everyone. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to pause it here just for a moment. Any other questions that anyone has about the stuff we just covered before we dive a little bit deeper? These breaks are also so I can get water, so I don't like get too raspy there. Awesome. Any questions at all? <sighs> Awkward silence. Fine. All right, let's keep going. And awesome. All right, so we learned our first line of code. We learned what an IDE is, awesome. Now let's start talking some truth. Let's talk about how everyone thinks computers are super smart and how that is a completely debunked fact. Let's go ahead and talk about our one plus two thing. 
first, I'm gonna ask the computer, hey, can you remember a few things for me, please? And it's gonna say, uh, I mean, kinda, but no, not really. It's gonna be very, very difficult for a computer to remember things unless you explicitly tell them. They're not that smart. You, the coder, has to tell the computer everything you want it to do. If you ever think in your computer coding that the computer's just gonna do it for you, it's most likely not correct. The computer needs to be told everything it needs to do. It needs to know the task explicitly. Let's explore what I mean by that. First, we're gonna talk about again our one plus two situation. So we said, get the first number. Remember, this is one plus two. We got our first number, one. The computer's like, got it, one, awesome. Let's keep going. And it's gonna go to the next part of our algorithm. It's gonna say, all right, add the second number. And the computer's like, uh, okay, plus two, that's fine. But um, I have no idea what that first number was. I don't remember it. Because you didn't tell me to remember it. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna clear up that space for something else then. And I'm gonna remember plus two, that's cool. But this isn't gonna help us. We need all of our numbers in there, one and two, to add together in order to create something beautiful, like three. So we need to let the computers actually remember our information. So let's try this thing again. We're gonna get the first number. But with this now, we're not gonna just pretend or hope that our computer remembers this, but we're actually going to use a thing called variables. Variables are the things that we need and use in order to allow computers to remember our data, our stuff. So variables are cool, interesting name. I think I learned it once in the sixth grade in math class, but what exactly do they look like? That's what we're gonna explore right now. So with this, let's go ahead and bring in our pretend IDE here to the right. We're gonna create our first variable. The keyword that we use to start creating a variable to start creating a variable is the word let. This right here is a keyword. You'll see it in orange. You'll also see your IDE highlighting these keywords. They are very, very powerful words. Let, in this case, is telling the computer we're gonna be creating a variable. And I'm gonna create a variable called my first number. And I wanted to remember that number one from our example, so I say equal to one. Okay. Now this is a lot here. What in tarnation did we just create? We have absolutely no idea a lot of those things we haven't talked about. So we're actually gonna explore a little bit more about this thing we just created, this variable. So again, that let, this thing right here is called a keyword. This keyword tells our computer we're gonna be making a new variable. Let tells our computer we're going to be creating a new variable. Then comes the more fun part, the creativity. You create the name for the variable. So this right here is an arbitrary name. You can create whatever you want. I called it my first number. You can call it cookie, you can call it pizza, you can call it Pony Express. Whatever you wanna call it, you can do that because you are the artist, you are the developer. But just know that let always has to start it if you're going to create the variable. So naming it is up to your creativity, but I do wanna kind of bring up one small point here is that the naming convention for these things can be kind of picky. So when you're creating your variable, my variables is num1, that's cool. I'm starting it out like this, that's all fine. But let's bring you an example that is not cool. Right here we say one cool variable. This is not okay because we are starting it with a number. You must always start your variables with, num uh, with <laughs> excuse me, with alpha characters. So only with the alphabet can you start your variable names. So one cannot be in the front of your variable. It can be at the end, it can be in the middle, it's fine. As long as it doesn't start with a number, you're A-OK. -okay. So do not do that. One more thing here, look at this variable. No numbers in here, but this still doesn't work because we cannot put in special characters into our variables. The majority of special characters cannot be placed in our variables. Some exceptions, of course, are dashes and underscores, but just for the time being, don't try to put in any special characters. Keep them only alpha characters, only alphabetic characters. That is how we can create our variables. Right, I know, so picky. But let's keep going here. One more thing, we have four parts of this whole stuff up here. So we learned about let, we learned about the naming of a variable. Let's talk about this thing right here. 
You all know what this is. This is an equal sign. But this equal sign means something very, very specific. It means what I'm going to or is telling our computer, we're going to assign the variable something. We're going to tell the computer, I want my first number to be something. Then comes what that thing is. I want it to be one. So let my first number equal one. Let my first number be one. That's what yeah, that equal says, and that's what goes on the right-hand side. Now, one thing I really want to call out here. Left-hand side of the equal sign is where we created the variable. The right-hand side of that equal sign is where we gave the value we want it to be. That is intentional, and that is very specific. Left side of the variable is where we created it. Right-hand side of the equal sign is where we set the value. This will always be true. So make sure that you're doing that. And one more thing too, please throw a semicolon at the very end of your code all the time. That is standard. Always make sure you put your semicolon there. It basically says, this is the end of my line. I want to do nothing else. All right, let's take a deep breath. Let's take a deep breath. A lot of stuff there, I'm talking a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Any questions out there? Anybody wants to ask about the material we just covered or anything previously? Yeah, so I was curious, um, was it called camel casing again for how to set up your variable? And is that super important to JavaScript only? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question there. So yeah, these are camel cased. We see camel cased because my M is lowercase. First, the next word is capitalized F and the number is also capitalized. This is called camel casing and it is very standard when naming our variables in JavaScript. You'll also see it in other languages such as Java. So awesome question. And yes, make sure you're always camel casing your variable names. Still, once I, uh, now that I initialize, or this is not the initialized variable, this is the declared variable, right? So <clears> my first number. Yeah, so technically you are, you are declaring and initializing this variable. So you okay. declared the variable and initialized it. So declare so once it. I, you, yeah, go ahead. Once I, okay, once I declared and initialized this variable, right? And I can go back under, let my first number, right? And then after I do that, right? Can I manipulate the value of my first value of my first number without using let? And isn't that the purpose of using let? So you were correct when you said at the second line, you can just say my first number equals two. That would be re or sorry, that'd be reinitializing it to another value. But you will not use let. Let is only used when you are creating the variable for the first time. Let is only used when you're creating the variable for the first time. Now, how many so times can I re reinitialize, reinitialize my first number? Can I re save re the environment? Save the environment. You can reinitialize them as much as you want. Recycle your variables. Be a good sport. Yes, great question. You can. So I can have my first want. variable a billion times on my IDE. Say that one more time. Huh? Say that one more time. I can have one billion my first numbers on my IDE. On my I, yeah, my IDE. You would only like have one through one billion. So um, you can only have my first number created only one time, but you can reinitialize right. it a billion times. Okay. So you technically, from the computer's perspective, you only have one my first number variable. That's just being okay. reset to different values a billion times. That's a so great question. Awesome. All right. So what about global variables and constants? We haven't gotten there just yet, so we will continue to dive in as much as we can. Um, what is the significance of the semicolon from Derek here? That it just indicates the end of the line in the programming language. So, or sorry, of the programming line. So the semicolon basically means stop here. I have created a statement and I want to end it. In JavaScript, semicolons are not required, but highly recommended. So you know where the end of your line is. That goes without saying that other languages are, excuse me, other languages, uh, excuse me, mandate them in order for the code to work. So that's why we say always throw a semicolon on the end of your code in JavaScript so you can get into practice there. 
it is the best practice to do. So always make sure it ends with that semicolon. What is the difference between the keyword and the code? Um, if you could, I guess, give me a little bit more context about that one. If you want to, yeah, if you want to put a little bit more context in that question, I apologize. So I'll try it a little bit, but the keyword and the code, so a, a keyword is part of code, but the keyword are reserved words in coding languages that tell the computer specifically what you want to do. Right now, we only know one keyword, which is let, which tells the computer you want to create a variable, which is awesome. You want to create a variable. Let tells the computer that. So keywords indicate to the computer what exactly you want to do, whether you want to create something or do something extra. That's what those keywords do. You also can't create variable names with keywords either. So you couldn't create let and then let equals one. Keywords are reserved. So you're not able to actually create variable names like that. Can you hear me? I can, Jody, yep. Uh, so I just have a question about the book itself. Um, does the book, um, and I know this may sound like a weird question, but does the book teach best practices? So the reason I'm asking is because in the exercises, it had me declare several variables in A, and then it had me declare some more in C. So when you do it that way, you've got variables spaced out through your code, and these were global, so they would have all been in scope. So I initially just put them all at the top of my code as per, you know, as per, I, it just makes sense to me to declare all the variables at once at the top of my code and then code from there further down. The way it had me doing it was mm -hmm. put in some variables, then put in some consoles, then declare some more variables and do some more consoles. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. no. So, uh, um, so for, for that, for, to answer your question, does it teach best practices in the beginning? We're more, te like more focused on teaching you just the coding in general. So through practice like that, we'll learn best practices as we move forward. But if it's easier to teach an individual that doesn't know anything about coding in a specific way, the book typically tends to go that direction in the beginning and then basically restructure as we move forward. Okay, so, so if I had done it the way I originally, because I did my, I actually did modify it to conform with the, the book. But if I had done it the way I originally did, which was, put all the variables at the top from both A and C, because that just made the most sense to me, and then do the code below that. Would, would I have been docked off for that? No, we're not looking for specifics. We're looking to make sure that the, that the intent was, that the, uh, basically whatever, the, whether it be assignments or studios or exercises, as long as the output is correct, that is what it's looking for. Oh yeah, the output was correct. Okay. So yeah, with that then, yeah, however you want to code it, as long as it looks correct, that's up to you. It is a little bit more dangerous because you're getting off the path that launch code is set for you. But if you see an, an, an indication that something can be optimized, that is up to you to take that on. I would only recommend to do that if you feel truly comfortable with the material. Um, the other question I have is, I did the exercises initially and I took it out of my replit submission. But initially when I did it, so originally the exercise, I don't know whether you remember, but basically what the exercise wanted you to do was calculate the, the, all these distances or whatever and time. Mm -hmm. And then at the very bottom, it had you print out the two calculations to the screen, right? It just had okay. you print them Jody, both out. Jody, I'm, I'm, I have to stop you there. We can talk about that more in one-on-one -on -one for specific examples uh, with the exercise, but we have to continue the material here. So if you want to reach out to me one-on-one -on -one with that question in particular, I'm happy to do that. Unless it, the question that you're pertaining to it has to do something with the material we're covering right now. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. And just go ahead and type it out to me if you want meet with your TA. I can also talk to you after class. And if you want to stay on this call when I've dismissed or when we're done with lecture here, I'm happy to talk about it. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah we can do that um, because okay. I need to talk to you anyway after class about Replit itself. So For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to talk, we'll go ahead and talk about after class. All right, okay. I got a few more questions here I can try to cover here and then we have to move on because we got started a little bit late today. All right, do, 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 do. Uh, can snake case be used uh, at all from Jen here? And I'm sorry if I missed somebody else up there. In problematic long-term. I would say that don't use snake case in JavaScript. You're typically looking at camel case. So try to do camel case always. I highly, 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 highly recommend continuing with camel case and getting adjusted to that. Snake case I know is Python specific, but we are not in Python. So unfortunately, we have to go over JavaScript standards and deal with what they've set there. So great question. Excuse me, I thought Java won't let you use uh, 
won't let you use or let you write code without using camel case. So there's no such thing as just using, declaring a variable and then using a the variable in all uppercase, all lowercase. So for Java, when or sorry, with JavaScript, when you're creating a variable name, you can use, you're, you cannot use numbers in the beginning and you can't use specific special characters. However, underscores and dashes are technically allowed, okay. but they are not recommended. So uh, camel case is what we want to go with going forward in JavaScript since that is the standard and that's what we have to typically code to. So uh, camel case allows you to differentiate between the variables that you use and as opposed to you getting mixed up to which lines of code do which as you, especially as you convey the lines of code to somebody else. So camel case helps you, left, uh, helps you differentiate the words inside of a variable name. So as okay. we can see here on the screen, my first number is easily readable because F and N are capitalized. Therefore, kind of differentiating the words that we're using. Awesome question. All right, Derek, real quick, let and, is let and console log the same thing? I think someone's answered this, but it is not. Let creates a variable while console.log prints something out to the screen so it's human readable. All right. Do already, guys. Awesome questions here. I'm happy about this. Look at that. Everyone just like wanting to know, is like, what's going on with this coding stuff? I love it. All right. Da -da -da -da. All right. Let's see if there's anything else here. Okay, we're good. I'm like trying to wrestle with time right now. I was like, I want to answer everyone's question, but I want to make sure we stay on cue here. Okay, let's go ahead and keep on going, everyone. So I'm gonna go that, that, and we have more time at the end too. I'm gonna to answer as many questions as you all have. This is our first class. I'm sure you have a bunch of them, but let's go ahead and finish this up here. So we were talking about variables there. So let's go ahead and bring in that IDE. So we got the first number, we say let my first number equal one. So we have one now in the computer because we saved it to that variable. We said equals to one. My first number is now equal to one. Awesome, that is what we need. So let's go ahead into the second part of the algorithm. Remember, we're just adding one plus two here to add the second number. This portion is what we need to talk about. So what we're gonna do with this one is that we're gonna create, or we're gonna actually ask ourselves, how would we create a variable for that second number? As we've already talked about it, answer to yourself, what do we start with to create another variable? What keyword? If you answered let, to create that second variable there, it is correct. Let, we're gonna call this one my second num. Awesome job, I'm seeing everyone in there. There it is, yes, my second number equal to two. Awesome job, we're gonna say equal to two. I didn't say second number because I ran out of space here. So it's gonna be second num, but whatever, that's fine with us. So we just added, or we put the second number into our computer's mind by creating that variable. Awesome, so we have two there now. And then we actually have to add the second number to the first number. So how do we exactly do that? We need to add this plus thing in there. But well, what do we do to do this in the computer so it actually knows what we're talking about? Remember, we gotta talk about this stuff in the computer's language. So let's bring that over here and actually do that. We have my first number, which equals one, and my second number, which equals two. Awesome. But we need to add our two numbers together. So what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna create a third variable to save the outcome, or just basically save in this case, the answer. So I say let the answer equal, because again, let creates this new variable called the answer equal to, and then I need to actually tell it what I want to add together. So pay attention here. We're gonna see how we can actually do this. So the answer equals two, and now I'm gonna call to my first number. Perfect, we use the name of the variable to get its value. So my first number, the thing there on the first line, is now being used in the second line. I'm calling out to that variable. I'm calling out to its name. So it actually knows who I'm calling out to. So my first number. And now I need the second number. And I need to add it to the first number. So just like math, I say plus, but then I call out to that another, another variable name, my second num. So take a very close look at this line. Let the answer, the creation of that variable called the answer, equal to my first number plus my second number. That second portion is when we're actually referring to existing variables we just created in the IDE to bring, to bring down their value so we can actually utilize it. What do I mean by that? Take a look at this, my first number. When I do this line in my IDE, and my computer's actually going through this code, it's gonna say, okay, I see my first number, and it's gonna replace it with a value of one. 
because you declared it on the first line. Remember, everything is mowing, going sequentially. It's going sequentially. So it says, okay, you want my first number and its value right there? The value is one. So we say one, and it does the second, or it does the same thing for the second number there. So it says plus, and it replaces that variable name with the actual value of that variable, two. So one plus two, and then it adds that together. The computer says, okay, I know one plus two equals three. So it assigns the answer to three. So awesome. This is what our code is doing. Finally, just for a full circle, we need to actually print this out to the screen. How do we show humans something and print it out to the screen? How do we do that? Exactly, the console log. Console.log, and then we console log something. Now look, take a very close look at this one here. Our output's gonna be three, but we console logged our variable name. We can actually use variable names within the console log to print it out to the screen. But take a very close look at this one. It does not have quotes. Remember, if we come over to our IDE, when we just wanted to print out three here, we put it in quotes. We'll talk about those quotes in a moment. But when we actually want to print out a variable name, we actually use the variable name without the quotes. So what we're going to do over here is that we're actually going to take that example and do it right here. So we said, let my first number equals to one. We say, let my second number, oh, I said num there, right, didn't I? Two. And now I'm going to unmute and someone help me out here. How am I going to add these two? What am I going to do? My first number mm -hmm. plus my second number. Very good. And what is that going to do exactly? It's going to add them together. Very good. It's going to replace those variable names. Let's call out to the variables with the actual value that's stored here on line one and line two. And then finally, just for our benefits, we're going to console.log the answer. Awesome. Just but if like I that. had to just, if I had to just put the number three in console.log with quotation marks, that would have designated the number three as a string, right? As opposed to an integer. Are you talking about right here? Yeah. If I Did just put, erase the answer, put quotation marks on the number three, would that designate the number three as a string as opposed to an integer? Yeah, exactly. So yes. just put three here in quotes, and we'll just put it, make it as a string. Right now, we're looking at actually putting it as, oh, sorry, I heard a question. So once a question. you did that, that designated as an absolute number. So this one, we're really just checking out not really the types here, but that we can actually utilize a variable's name inside of the console log. The type itself is dictated by however we're adding things up here. So yeah, we're using numbers. So if we're talking about data types right now, the answer would technically be a number because we're only using numbers up here. But we haven't learned too much about data types just yet, so, so we can't dive too much into that one. So I have a question. Yeah. Can't, can't you just, instead of declaring all this, can't you just say, my first num, let my first num equal one, my first num plus equals two, console.log my first num, and you should still get three. Um, so you say keep these two lines the same? No, I'm saying, so let my first num equals one, mm -hmm. semicolon. Next line, my first num plus equals two, semicolon. Next line, console.log, parenthesis, my first num, parenthesis. You should still get the answer three. Absolutely, because you're using Without a having operator. to declare like three variables to do using, that, you should be able to. He's using plus build. equal, right? Yeah, I'm exactly. using plus, so, so, okay. yeah. so for those operators, we haven't talked about them. But yeah, you're absolutely correct. So plus equals is one of the operators that will add whatever's on the right-hand side to the existing variable. But right now we're going just through how to add two variables together and console logging that. So you're absolutely right, Jody. That would be how we could optimize this solution. But right now we are just looking at the very, very simplistic. We are just breaking it down. But I love where you're at though. You're absolutely correct. So keep going that route. We are just working it a little bit differently right now. But I love that. So awesome. Oh, yeah, by yeah. the way, you're what time right. is what time is class over? Just sign so up. Class itself. So we'll go with small groups here in a little bit. Uh, but class itself is technically ending at 8.30. Okay, and then me and you will talk after that, okay. No, well, we can talk after lecture. So whenever I'm dismissing everyone from lecture, we can go ahead and talk then. And oh, then okay. we can go to your small group. Yep. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll hold you back awesome. in just a little bit. All right. Okay, it's fine. I just wanted to know, okay. All right, no worries, no worries. Okay, so we go ahead and press run here and we console log the answer. So what we just did is that we console log this variable. As we can see, we did one plus two. I know that because my first number is up here equal to one, 
and my second num is equal to two down here. So that is how we add those two together. We throw it in this new variable called the answer and we paste this down here. Now, one thing I wanna show everyone is that if I took these two lines down here and I pasted them up, so I have let the answer equals my first number plus my second number with my first number and my second number below it, will this work? No. Why no, not? No. It's not it's sequential. Fine work. It's, it's not do sequential. Something. It's not sequential. It has to go in order like the cake. I love it. Exactly. We need to bake the cake correct. I just tried to decorate a bunch of ingredients there. So no, it will not. We're going to go and run and see what's exactly here. We're going to get this fat, ugly red thing over here called reference error. Cannot access my first number before initialized. Again, sequentially, sequentially, sequentially. We start in line one and we go down on line four. On line one, I just said, hey, add my first number. And my computer's like, what the heck are you talking about? My first number isn't even around yet. You are way ahead of, like, ahead of your time. Stop it. Drink more coffee. This is not correct. And it throws out a red error. So this is what we see here on the right-hand side, the reference error. So you all are absolutely correct. Awesome job. We need to put this above there. Perfect. Hey, Kyle, before we move on, can you show them how to find out where the problem is with that line number? I absolutely can, Sean. Let's do it really quick here. I'm going to go ahead and put that error right back there. So we put that line three back over to line one. We run. And we see, again, cannot access my first number before initialization. And so I know exactly where this problem occurred because what I can do is at this next line here, I see lecture, whatever, 2012 was what I named it, index.js, which is the file we're in. We're in index.js. And it says one like this weird thing, colon one, colon 17. What does this exactly mean? It means your problem, or my problem, excuse me, is on line one at character 17. It can tell you exactly what character your code blew up on. So this error is actually giving you a lot of detail. All this stuff down here, do not even worry about it. Focus on the line up here, the index.js, the thing that you know exists. All this other stuff, all pretend, I promise. I'm not gonna worry about that. Make our own, it would even make my head spin. I don't wanna worry about it. You don't wanna worry about it. Worry about that first line, you'll find that error. Thumbs up, everyone. Great, <laughs> great call out there, Sean. Awesome. All right. We are getting a little over time here. So, but anyway, we're having fun, right? We're having fun. Everyone's having fun. Yeah. All right. Help me out with this. How would I create a variable called a number with a value of 10? Wouldn't you just a say number, let a number equal 10. equal 10, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I like, I like how you just said just that. I was like, thank you. All right, you're already finding this easy. I'm okay with this. Let a number equal 10. It's self-explanatory, right? I'm not trying to trick you. I'm, I'm a nice person, right? I think so. I don't know. You guys barely know me. You can't even make, yeah. All right. <laughs> how about this one? Let my var equal a number plus five. What is the value of my var? My var. Uh, 10 plus 15. 15. It is 15. Very good, everyone. Yes, because a number is the value of 10 and 5. 10 plus 5, 15. Fantastic. All right. This line right here, what does this line do? Again. Hello, world. It tells the screen to print hello. Very good. It prints it out so it's human readable. This console.log is only for us, only for humans. So we can actually see what the computer is thinking. Remember that computers, though they are not smart, think very, very fast. They can write these, do these tasks in milliseconds. So we want to see what they're thinking at particular milliseconds. So we use that console log to kind of look at what they're doing. So that's what we're going to be using that. We typically use a lot of it for debugging as well into the future. All right. One thing I want to talk about right here is that we've been seeing these quotes randomly occur. What do they exactly mean? So we're going to talk about data. Okay. We're gonna talk about data real quick. So data comes in different flavors, especially in JavaScript. Things that you've seen today is 10, two, and maybe this 3.5. We haven't really seen a decimal, but all of these two JavaScript are particularly called a number. They're all numbers. Awesome. We're gonna learn about the second major data type here in JavaScript that we're gonna be dealing with these next few lectures. This thing, hello world. This kind of data type is called a string. We know it's a string by one particular detail. These quotes. 
The quotes around hello world dictate that this is a string. In JavaScript, we'll remember it's a string. Numbers and strings are two very different data types and for that have to be treated differently. We cannot add two strings together, like two numbers that are a string or something of those regards, add them together and think we're gonna get the correct answer back. Strings and numbers are different. So we have to treat them as such. So let's talk a little bit more about strings and what exactly they do there. So bringing back in that hello world example there, bringing in dogs, whatever, you can name, you can make anything a string, literally anything. So we have hello world, we've already seen that with a special character, alpha, uh, alpha text there, dogs, all just normal, just normal uh, characters there. And then we have an exclamation point, and ampersand, dollar sign, but we wrapped it in quotes. So this still made it a string. And then finally down here, we have 10 that's wrapped in quotes. We know that 10's a number, but the second we wrapped it in quotes, it became a string. So remember that if you wrap it in quotes, it automatically becomes a string. So let's talk about my favorite string in the whole wide world, dogs. And we're gonna go ahead and create a variable out of this one. What keyword do we always use to create a variable? Yes, you nailed it, let, very good. And I'm gonna just call it my var equals dogs. Mind blown or what? Yes, creating string variables is nothing different than how we've been doing it with number variables. So the only big difference is, is that we wrapped it in quotes. So remember that if, it is wrapped in quotes. It is automatically a string. From Will Morris, double quotes defines string. Single quotes can be used if string has to contain double quotes instead of a text. That is correct, Will, and they can also be used vice versa. You can use single quotes and double quotes to denote a string in JavaScript. To everyone else, I want to go ahead and just elaborate too on that. So what I said is let my string equal, and I said dogs, right? I'm going to say let my string two equal single quote dogs. These two have the exact same values, but what I did is I used single quotes for one and double quotes for the other. That's okay. You can use those however you want in uh, single quotes or double quotes. In JavaScript, they do not matter. In most of the cases, I believe launch code uses double quotes, so I highly recommend using double quotes, but if you want to use single quotes, be your creative self. One thing also I want to call out here real quick is that, and I've, I'm surprised I didn't have that in my lecture there, and I apologize, make sure that your variable names are always unique. Your variable names should always, always, always be unique. What do I mean by that? I said let my string equal dogs and let my string two equal dogs. We're going to go ahead and run this and we see that nothing happens here. No big error. But the second I take out that two there and I have my string and my string here both with let's in front of them and I run this, the variable names are no longer unique. Hence, we get a big red error. And that error is saying syntax error, identifier my string has already been declared. We cannot have same named variables declared twice in code. It can only be declared once. So if you ever see that syntax error and you see two lets in front of the two variables named the exact same, we're gonna have a problem, no matter if the values are different. So just remember that variable names have to stay unique. All right, everyone just pause, take a deep breath. That was a lot, that was a lot. But it's okay, because we're finished. All good, look at that. You made it through your first lecture. Congratulations, each and every one of you. Right, that was easy, right? Only 200 more to go. I actually don't know the number. I feel like that's a little high, but whatever. We made it for the first one, that's the best thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow you guys to unmute yourself. I'm gonna answer a few more questions here while we can. Any final questions anyone wants to go over while we have those moments? I have a question, Kyle. Yeah, what's up, Blake? If you were to take away let and just put uh, my string. It's the yes sign. That's going to be the yes sign. It's just going to print the same, right? If you put dogs, you me, I'm sorry. Uh, tell me this. What, my, yeah, what line would you want me to put the console log so, so we can see what the computer's <clears throat> thinking? Yes, uh, my string equals then just uh, just the single quotation mark and dogs, it will still print, but it will just look the same, correct? 
Um, how about this? Just make sure that we're on the same page. If I put a console log here, what is different. going to be, what would be the console log? Different. It would be different. It would be different. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Yep. But if you put dogs with just a, in where different is right now, it will print, but it just look the same. Well, you just reassign this variable to the same value twice. Gotcha. So you can put it in there a million times, but you're just, you're, you're going to anger your computer and your computer might walk out on you because you just assign that variable dogs to it a hundred million times. So just be careful. But yeah, you're absolutely correct. Thank awesome. You. Great question. Absolutely. Uh, 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 how to save this program in Replit? If you want to save it, I believe it's already saved once you have, once you're signed in, you have to sign in in order for it to save because it saves automatically. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm going to see if there's any other questions I'm missing up here. Oh, uh, for the syntactical error, let me see if it actually did or not. I thought usually they do post the line. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Um, to Amy, uh, it does say where the line is. It says index.js at line seven here. So it tells you exactly down here saying, hey, line seven, I've already declared my string. What are you doing? So it does tell, excuse me, it does tell it, just make sure that you're finding actually the location of that file that it's actually saying. So it's gonna just say colon seven in this case, which means line seven, which is exactly correct. Awesome. Um, why didn't it print out with the same names dogs? Derek, can you go ahead and, um, if you want, elaborate on that just a little bit. Um, and then I have a when and error occurs, all functions and directions of the other directions. Uh, Jacob, and to everyone out there, the password for class attendance will be given to you by your small groups. I will never have it. So uh, I've gotten these questions in the past. I will never have your password. I'm sorry. I don't even know it. I don't even know where to type it in at, but I will never have the class attendance passwords. Oh, thank you, Sean. Um, before adding it to the console log. Um, Derek, if you can, if you have a microphone there, if you want to mute yourself and just want to make sure to answer your question before we're done here. Um, if I go and run this, it's going to print out dogs both times there because we are updating that. But trying to get it there. I think he was asking when you used in that example with different, when you were doing let my screen equal different and it wasn't printing out, but you're still using the same quotes. Uh, we're talking about like that? Yeah, okay. I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, we'll go ahead and go over that just to make sure. Um, so I just go ahead and press ran or run here, excuse me. At line six, we set my string to dogs and then we console log out my string. We see that up here for dogs because again, sequentially, sequentially, sequentially. So we go from dogs, we declared my string as dogs, we printed it out, which we see it up there. Then we redeclared my string to different, something different. And then we printed it out again on line nine. I don't really want to know. There before we have different printing out next, because we had to go down the line from one to nine. So hopefully that adds a little bit of clarification. But Derek, I see, yeah. Derek, any, any other questions you have around that? All right, any final questions before I am done chatting with y'all? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, in the exercise part, I have noticed that uh, uh, in the first, this uh, let my string is a type of string, right? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Yeah, this my string variable is a type of string. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Then that same my string uh, variable is assigned to a number. So, so yeah, if we say my string to five here, we can do this. So yeah. what will it's gonna be number yeah. five? Yep. So the my string uh, type type is type is number. five. I mean type is string. When is we are again assigning five number five to my string, we should add this double quotes, right? Because every string should be in double quotes or else in single quotes. 
Correct. If you want it to be a string, you'll have to put quotes around it. So we just ran this. And by the way, type of is one thing we weren't able to talk about tonight, but this is how we print out the data type actually of our variable. So type of means it's going to print out whatever the variable type of my string is, which as we know, dogs and double quotes is a string. And then it comes down here and does it again, but we reassigned my string to five. So it prints out a number. It printed out number because like you just called out, it's not in double quotes. So to change that, I would wrap it in double quotes just like that and press that one. That's and now means. both will be strings. Again, the addition of double quotes or even those single quotes indicates to our Cam. computer, in the case of JavaScript, Cam. that it should be a string. Cam, once you had, you had never put the double quotes on the number five, right? Would that have been considered a syntax error or a runtime error? Neither it is absolutely correct. So if I didn't put the quotes on here, what it does is it just changes my string from dogs to the number five. So we That's going to be number. Yep. Ah, uh, so it's still going to run it regardless, but it's going to run under a different. It's going so. Oh, uh, hold on. So when I reinitialize a variable, right? I can not only re reinitialize the value of the of the variable. I can also re reinitialize the data type of that variable once I declared it as lit. So my string, once re reinitialized, can become either a string or a num or an integer. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So when you reinitialize a variable to that value, whatever the value's data type is, goes along with it. They're friends, they're partners. So if you reinitialize it to five, it's gonna be a number. If you really initialize it to dogs or pizza, it's gonna be a string. So yeah, whatever you re whatever that value is, you reinitialize it to the data variable type of that value follows along. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, my question is, so like we just seen you do the um, the change that string into a number. What about changing um, it the other way around? Yeah, absolutely. Like, so you can reassign your variables to whatever you want. So if we wanted to put 60 here, we wanted to put pizza here. Completely fine. Instead of using like the type of though, like would you use like number if you wanted to change it into a, like a, a number instead of a string? So that's like, something we haven't learned just yet. Pizza. Yeah, I was confused on that too. No, so, there, there, there's probably a two number function or a or a to string uh, function that'll do that. There are in most languages. I would think yeah. JavaScript so, has one. So JavaScript does have it. We haven't learned it yet, but if you are interested in learning of how to do that magic, it's going to be called casting. Well, this goes along with that casting. Harry Potter 20th anniversary, but it's yeah. casting. Yes, if you want to try to do some magic like that. So yeah, there is that stuff, but we have not learned that. We have learned a lot today. You guys are trying to get more out of me. Stop being greedy. I'm not going to give you more information. <laughs> All right, we've learned enough today. Let's get out of here. But guys, Everyone out there, thank you so much. Happy first lecture. I'm excited to do this right, with you. all of you. Thank you guys. Have awesome. a great thank one. You. Go to your small groups. Again, 8.30 p.m. is when I'm going to be doing Studio View. Feel free to come back into the exact link, and we'll go ahead and go over it as well. Other than that, I know I told some people to feel free to stick on after this lecture. Feel, so feel free to do that. To all of you else, have fun, and I'll see you back at 8.30. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. It was fun. Absolutely. Happy to have all you guys. We're having a Had lot a of fun. Good time. Yeah. A lot of fun. <laughs> hey, uh, Kyle. How do we uh, find our? Let me turn that light off. How do we find the small group? Like, is that going to be through Slack? Yep. Uh, go you're... into. Yeah, Clark. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, no, Kyle. no. Go for it. Go for it. You know, like, better. you know better. This is my domain. I got <laughs> exactly. this one. Uh, uh, go into Slack. Your small group is the one that when you go is the two names beside in, in Canvas. Like you search your name in the people tab, it'll say something like Sarah and Katie. Those are your people. Those are your TAs. Once you know your two TAs, look for their channel. A lot of you have already joined your TA's channel. In that channel will be the zoom link that you need to go to so you need to be in the channel the slack channel for your tas so do you know who your tas are um i know 
Dakota, like, uh, Dakota Prasson is one of them. And then yep. so, uh, Terrence and Dakota would be your two then, I think, because they're mine. That's so yep. that's. And okay. then if you go into their channel, um, it is a, I'm pulling it up so I know exactly what it looks like. Um, it should be a link in their channel, um, a pinned link. Yep, it's um, it's the first post from today. Okay, so when you say go to their channel, should it already be added to the left side of my Slack, or do I have to like search them in? You'll have to search it. You'll yeah, have to you don't get automatically it. Yeah. added. Um, but then it's Terrence put that post up today at one twenty-five with the link. And so just search uh, Dakota Press on, and that should. Uh, just search Dakota, because that'll be the name of the, the channel is named Ta hashtag Terrence and Dakota for yours. Okay. Um, and everyone's, everyone's names are slightly different. I just recommend, you know, if you're with Katie and Sarah, search Sarah. We don't have any, any two people with the same name this time. So if you're with <laughs> Safna, search Safna, find the channel that has Safna's name in it. Join that, find your group, find your link, and you're good to go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I know that you walked, um, you just walked Jack through it, but I'm in people right now and I don't see it. So in people, search your name. Go ahead and search your name. My name? Yeah, your name. Oh. Yeah, because it's connected to each person has uh, their own section. That's so. Okay, I found you, my name. You found your name. Who are you with? Fred and, um, hold on. Okay. So you're with Fred and Santoshi. Um, yeah. So if you search in um, Slack again, in that go to add a channel. Um, yeah. Um, do you see a channel that's hashtag Fred slash Santoshi? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So join that channel and you should see Fred's message from six. Oh, there's a Zoom today. link. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. If you're having trouble finding your TA group, I just put a message in the general channel. Please also comment and thread there so we can help multiple people at a time. Or else y'all will be sitting here for a while as Clark helps you one by one. <laughs> It's pretty much the same process for everyone, depending on just who you are. I just had a quick question regarding the exercises. Yep. Uh, so on the first one, I, I wrote the, the console.log as a string with uh, like the tilde and the dollar sign with the squiggly bracket. I don't know what you call those. Is that okay? Or do you want us to like uh, write it as we're learning it? Um, for now, write it as you're learning it, just because that is okay. a process. Okay. Um, but so if for, you, but always, I want you always to feel free to experiment also. Like if you go to W3 schools or any external resource and you see something and you're like, I want to try that out, try that out. You're not going to break anything. Um, the okay. exercises are not graded. They're just for you to practice as well as you can. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Still two seconds. I see you. I also do not see their channel. <laughs> so. uh, I just added you, Bill, um, because uh, they accidentally created this private out of force of habit. So I added you manually. So you should now see it uh, as a channel on your list. Kyle, stay here. I am. Yep. There you are. Yeah. Yep. Jody, did you want to go ahead and, uh, I, I know we have a few people also on the call here. I just want to make sure that everyone has, is finding Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm just waiting for there. them to get all their stuff. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I, hey, Kyle, yeah, you want to why don't I just broker? throw you and Jody in a breakout room? Awesome. Thank you. You know what? A breakout room? It's a way that you, you all, it's kind of like a private side room. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. That's super cool. 
Um, you're going to be I, using it. You're going to be using it a lot in small. I haven't groups. used Zoom. Um, I haven't used Zoom a ton. Like it is very accessible, um, but I tend to use Discord. So it's just one of those things. Because I like the way Discord is set up. I like the that you can have chat and voice. Um, so 